Russia once stretched from Finland to Alaska. Russia transformed from this to this to this. From losses to gains to a dissolution and some recent controversial gains to discover it all. I advise you to watch this video till the end because in this video we're going to discuss the territorial change of Russia from mid 19th century till now. My name is Stefan, history teacher, hustling history for you. The only thing you have to do is make sure to subscribe, also hit the notification bell to join the hustle. Let's start. In 1721, Tsar Peter the Great proclaimed the Russian Empire. Now before that, we had the Tsardom of Russia, which stretched all the way to the Russian Far East. Now in the 18th century, the Russians colonized the Americas. They even had an outpost in what is now Northern California, but left that in 1841. Alaska was sold to the United States for 7.2 million US dollars. Russian's imperial ambitions were far from over. They conquered the Caucasus and also Turkestan. In the upcoming years more Central Asian territories would be conquered. Territories that are now countries as Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Kyrgyzstan once all belonged to the Russian Empire and later the Soviet Union. 1905 Russia lost a war against Japan and had to seize the southern part of the Sakhalin Island. Now, in the same year, the Russian Revolution of 1905 started on several places in the Russian Empire. People started to revolt against Tsar's rule, but this was all bloodily crushed. 1914, World War I begins and Russia is allied with France and Great Britain and finds itself into a war with the Ottoman Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the German Empire. Now, a lot of people say that Russia was not prepared for the First World War, but it actually was because the Germans anticipated that the Russian army needed three weeks to mobilize, but it got into action much quicker, therefore made some territorial gains in East Prussia and Galicia. However, in the following year, the Russians were pushed out. See, the Russian army was not prepared for a war of attrition that would drag on for many years. Soon, millions of Russians of soldiers died in the most abysmal conditions. Things at home weren't great either. In Russian cities, there were food shortages. So, something had to change. 1917, February, on International Women's Day, the women of Petrograd, now St. Petersburg, started to protest against Tsar's rule. They were soon joined by workers and even the military. The soldiers that were ordered to suppress the uprising chose the side of the protesters. The Tsar was done for, so he was forced to abdicate. Now, we had a provisional government for Vlad by Georgi Lvov and later by the socialist Kerensky. Now Kerensky, he made the unpopular decision of continuing the war against Germany. Things weren't getting any better. In October that year, the hardline communist, also known as the Bolsheviks, led by Vladimir Lenin, seized power in Petrograd and soon in Moscow as well. Now what followed was the Russian Civil War. Now to my pupils, I always say that the Russian Civil War is the most complicated but also the most simple conflict to learn. Let me explain. Simple because it was basically red communist versus white anti-communist. These whites consisted of pro-Tsarist armies but also social democrat fighters and many nationalists that want to create their own state. We already have a clue why the whites lost. They were simply too divided. Now I will explain the Russian Civil War in another video but I do want to shed some light on the nationalist movement. See, the Russian Empire was a multi-ethnic state. So when disturbances were there, 
many nationalities wanted to proclaim their own state. In Ukraine alone, we already saw the establishment of seven short-lived states. All these short-lived states were taken down by the Bolsheviks and incorporated into their Soviet Union, with the exception of the West Ukrainian People's Republic. That one was incorporated by the Second Polish Republic. Now, apart from the Poles, also Finland, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania successfully managed to secede from the former Russian Empire. Now, although the civil war officially ended in 1922, Islamic insurgents in Turkestan, named the Basmashi movement, fought off Soviet authorities till in the 30s. The Russian Civil War, it was a brutal mess that left millions of people homeless, dead, wounded or dispersed. At the end of 1922, the Soviet Union was born. Now the name is kind of misleading. The word Soviet means council and the Soviet Union consisted of these multiple Soviet socialist republics. So the biggest one was the Russian SSR. We also had the Ukrainian SSR, the Kazakh SSR and so on and so forth. Now this would imply that these Soviet socialist republics had some kind of autonomy, but this is not the case. See, the Soviet Union was a highly centralized state and it was practically Moscow that was calling the shots. An attempt to decentralize the Soviet Union led to its demise, but we get to that later. First, 1927, Joseph Stalin gains absolute power. Now, he starts a five-year plan and a process of collectivization of the agriculture. It came down to farms that were forced to join together. Food management was reorganized and, as a result, destabilized. And this led to some severe famines, which costed millions of lives. In Ukraine, Stalin went further. There, he created a man-made famine to subdue the remaining Ukrainian nationalist sentiments. Millions of people died. To make matters worse, Stalin had this paranoia syndrome. He was seeing enemies everywhere. And in the 30s, there was the Great Purge where millions of Soviet citizens were either shot or deported to the Gulag, or many of them would die. In August 1939, the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany signed the infamous Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact where spheres of influences were decided. In the following months, Stalin annexed the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, to the Soviet Union, as well as the eastern part of Poland. The western part was taken by the Nazis. And the Soviet Union annexed Northern Bukovina and Bessarabia from Romania. Now also, the Soviets had a free hand in Finland, but the Finns, they didn't give up without a fight. Soon, the first wave of attack from the Soviets was annihilated by the Finnish forces. But the Finns had to give up eventually in February 1940. Now, although Finland remained independent, they had to cede several territories, Karelia, Sala, and several islands to the Soviet Union. In June 1941, Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union. Hitler's armies overran the Baltic states, Belarus and Ukraine. Meanwhile, the Romanians took Bessarabia back. The Finns also joined in. They took the territories back that they had to cede to the Soviet Union after the Winter War. And they went further, all the way to St. Petersburg. 1944, the Nazis were pushed out of Soviet territory when the war ended. The Soviet Union got from Finland the territories it got earlier after the Winter War. Also, the northern part of Patsamo was added to the Soviet Union. The eastern part of the former Second Polish Republic was permanently annexed by the Soviet Union. 
And the same goes for the territories of Northern Bukovina and Bessarabia. If we look at the Russian Far East, the Soviets got back the southern part of the Sakhalin Island, which they lost after the war with Japan in 1905. Also, they gained the Coral Islands. Now, during the Cold War, much stuff happened involving the Soviet Union, like the Hungarian Uprising, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Prague Spring, the Soviet-Afghan War. But when it comes down to territories, let's take a look at what happened after 1991. The liberal policies by Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev led to a coup attempt by hardline communists, which failed. Soon after, Ukraine declared itself independent, which was made official by a referendum at the beginning of December. And at the end of that month, at the end of the year, the Soviet Union officially dissolved. The Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania became independent once again. The countries of Belarus, Ukraine and Moldova became independent. If we look at the Caucasus, new countries as Azerbaijan, Armenia and Georgia emerged. And if we look at Central Asia, the countries of Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan saw the light of day. The Russian Socialist Soviet Republic transformed into the Russian Federation. Now many people here claim that th this transformation went without bloodshed. And although this is largely true, its aftermath certainly was not. Tajikistan saw a civil war and in other Central Asian countries there were riots. Looking at the Caucasus, things were even more grim. Islamic insurgents wreaked havoc. But this was outside Russian borders. So were pro-Russian separatists that wanted to secede from these newly created states. For example, South Ossetia and Abkhazia that wanted to secede from Georgia, which happened violently. Now, most noteworthy is the Chechen Republic of Ikeria that was proclaimed in 1991. This led to two Chechen wars with the Russian Federation. Chechen terrorists perpetrated bomb attacks and abductions and the capital of Grozny was razed to the ground. After this, Chechnya was absorbed back into the Russian Federation. You must understand that even without all its seceded former Soviet territories, Russia today is still a multi-ethnic state. Also, many people that identify themselves as Russians are living outside the borders of the Russian Federation. And this led to problems in Ukraine. After the Euromaidan protests in the Ukrainian capital of Kiev, pro-Russian President Yanukovych fled to Russia. The Russian Federation managed to take control of Crimea, which was annexed into the Russian Federation. Also, they support pro-Russian separatist movements in the East Ukrainian territories of Donetsk and Luhansk. Some people even argue that Russian soldiers are fighting there themselves. It is clear that the Russian struggle, as I like to call it, is far from over. Although I do believe that Portraying the Russian government and the Russian people as the bad guys, as many Western media subtle tend to do, is not attributing to the situation. How the situation can be solved, I honestly don't know. That is something for the future too, and this is History Hustle. If you have any idea, feel free to leave your thoughts down below. If you want to know more about a secessionist nation that broke away from my post-Soviet state, you can click right here to check out the video that I made about Transnistria. Please consider becoming a patron because with your donations, I can keep doing this and even expand. Links are in the descriptions. Do not forget to subscribe and see you guys next time.